Hello everyone, I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going through a medication that I get asked about all the time in practice. Um, we are using it a lot. It has been touted as like a wonder drug for weight loss. And so um, we are gonna be going through that today because I think with any sort of weight loss medication, the way that we do it matters right? The things that we do with it matters because at the end of the day, if you lose 40 pounds to gain 60 pounds, you're net 20 pounds in the wrong direction, right? Um, and sometimes you can actually lose weight and be getting fatter as we lose weight. I know, shocking. Um, and so we want to address all of these things. So if you're new to my channel, welcome, excited to have you here. Um, if you are enjoying our content um, and you're excited about this video, go ahead and hit the like button for us um, and drop a comment in the comments below because we would love to know what kind of videos you guys wanna be seeing more of in the future so that we can answer your questions because really our goal is to help more women feel their absolute best. Um, and the way that we do that is through educating people. So without further ado, let's jump in. Which medication are we talking about? So it should be no shock to people, I bet you it'll be no shock to people that we're talking about semaglutide today. So semaglutide is also called Ozembic or Wagovi, and it is a GLP-1 agonist. It was actually brought on the market for type 2 diabetes. Um, but what they found in those studies was that patients lost significant amounts of weight on the medication. So then fast forward, they do more research on the weight loss part of it, and it became this kind of wonder drug for weight loss. Um, so first of all, does it work? It does work, it does work. So um, a study in the New England Journal of Medicine found that patients lost about 10 to 15% of their body weight. Great, um, a 2022 study follow-up study to that one, um, found about 17% of body weight loss. Amazing. Um, and on average, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing that studies are showing about 10 to 15, 10 to 20% of weight loss. Great, right? If you're someone who struggles with weight, which a lot of people do, trust me, you're not alone in this, um, then this could be a really great way to get patients going in the right direction but it comes with caveats. And that's what we're gonna talk about later on in this video. There's ways to make this medication safer, more effective, and to stop from things like the rebound weight gain that, that patients can get. Um, and we're gonna talk about all of that. So first of all, how does it work? So this medication is a potent insulin sensitizer. It slows gastric emptying. So it's actually a really, really potent appetite suppressant. And that's really one of the number one things that they think that with the way that this helps is by suppressing appetite by changing food choices. Because patients are going from higher fattier foods and things like that to less fatty, healthier foods um, by changing that satiation and um, how hungry we feel and how satisfied we are after eating because it slows gastric emptying. The other thing that does is it helps with um, blood sugar sensitivity. Great. So side effects, right? Um, <laughs> nothing comes for free, that's how it works. And there are side effects. Um, so studies have shown up to like 70% of patients can get GI disturbances. And we have definitely seen this in practice with nausea being the number one complaint. Um, patients do find that over weeks so it's an injection every single week. Um, and week one, they might get some nausea. Week two, it's a little less. Week three, it's a little less. And so we find over time it gets better, but that's not true for all patients. And some patients just do not tolerate the nausea on this medication. Um, that's number one side effect. Um, the other thing to think about is that there was a study that showed that although patients lost a significant amount of weight um, on the medication, that they regained all of it, yes, all of it after coming off of the medication. And that is really where we want to tailor plans. We can't just give a medication and go, okay, there you go, weight loss forever. Um, it doesn't really work like that, right? So this is used in conjunction with lifestyle um, changes and should be used in conjunction with really specific lifestyle changes, which is where we're going next. So if I was using this medication in patients, which I do all the time, um, the first thing I would think of is patients need to get a good hormone evaluation. We need to actually know what's going on, right? Because let's say, for example, a patient has a an underlying thyroid concern. An insulin sensitizer doesn't change your thyroid problem. And so um, having good labs and a comprehensive evaluation is really, really important if we want to get patients the best results. Um, the other thing that 
we have noticed on this medication and that many other clinics are talking about with this medication is that although we have a significant change in weight, some of that change is coming from a decrease in lean muscle mass right? So this is why I said earlier, you can actually get fatter even though your scale's going down. I know, mind blowing, right? But you can, because at the end of the day, your lean muscle mass to fatty tissue ratio is really, really important. And if we're losing large amounts of lean muscle mass, you can actually have more fat in relation to your muscle. So you can actually be getting fatter, even though you are technically losing weight and getting skinnier. This is why so many diets and so many weight loss strategies and magic things fail, right? Is because when patients come off of it, they've lost their lean muscle mass and they can't maintain their gains. Um, so this is kind of where we want to head this off at the pass, right? We want to get ahead of this. So what do I mean by this? Um, well, in order to maintain lean muscle mass, maintaining protein intake is really important. Knowing where we start is really important. Um, and then obviously strength training is really important. So those are kind of the three things. So first of all, patients should get a DEXA scan if they're gonna go on this medication. Um, this does not mean go and step on an in-body and all the junky scales that are out there. They are not accurate. They are not accurate measures. And so a DEXA scan is going to be the number one most accurate measure that we can do to measure our lean body mass and our fatty body mass, right? And then we want to check as we're going through treatment to make sure that we're maintaining lean body mass and that our fatty body mass is what's going down when we're losing weight. A DEXA scan is going to be the way that we're able to do that. Um, here in the Valley, I actually have a DEXA scan place that I refer to that I think is great. Um, and this is something that I really encourage weight loss patients to do in general, um, but especially on a medication like this. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna make sure that although we're decreasing uh, calorie intake, most likely on this medication because it's increasing satiety and decreasing those cravings, that we're keeping our protein intake increased or the same keeping our protein increased or the same, okay? So that's really important, important enough to say it two times. What I see across the board in all things related to my patients who are female, right, is that on average, women tend to get protein out of the diet first, right? So if you're doing intermittent fasting, if you're doing insert fad diet here, um, oftentimes protein is the thing that kind of goes by the wayside. If we're feeling less hungry, protein is the heaviest, thing to eat in terms of like digestion and the way we feel. So oftentimes when patients are like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit less hungry, so I don't need as much protein. No, it should be the other macronutrients that we're thinking about if we're thinking about that. Or just using this to decrease our cravings for things like sugars and those kind of things. Um, but maintaining protein intake is really important. And then maintaining muscle mass in terms of strength training. So across the board, one of the best things we can do for anti-aging is start a strength training program. Um, and when I say start a strength training program, I actually mean train with somebody who knows what the heck they're doing. Um, I think that training with a trainer will change the way that you feel about your body. Um, it will change the way that you progress through exercises. This is a lot more than just doing a few push-ups, doing a few squats, picking up a five pound dumbbell or using bands, right? Those are good places to start, 100% good places to start. But the, but the benefit of a strength training um, program is to progress through. And that's what a really good trainer is able to do. Now, like anything, there's crappy trainers out there. So maybe you've had that experience. That doesn't mean that all of them are like that. Um, a trainer will just change things. They will change your body composition. They will change your life. They will change your outlook. They will change everything. Um, and if we're going on medications like semaglutide, that additional component as well as the protein is really going to set us up for long-term success. Um, because at the end of the day, who cares if you lose 20 pounds if when you come off of it, you gain more weight than you lost? Who cares, right? Um, so we want patients to be healthier at the end of this. And these are the ways that um, I recommend to my patients to do that. Um, put your questions in the comments below and then we will see you next time for next time's video.